Hi, this is Joe Rabel. We're going to talk about the S&P. want to make sure you understand, though, you know, I, I'm really not a huge fan of making big predictions on the market. I think you're going to be better off. I think you make more money if you just do solid analysis. Make sure that you're framing out whatever index that you're looking at, making sure you know the trend in multiple time frames and the momentum in multiple time frames. And I think your decision making process based on how the market reacts to these key levels is going to be much more successful than trying to make a big market call. So uh, let's get into the charts and talk about some of what's taking place. Uh, there, there's not a lot taking place on the higher time frames other than a, a grind higher. Um, but one of the things I want to point out is the uh, 18 month moving average. So let's just zero in on the monthly chart. The 18 month moving average is actually rising again. It was never falling, but it was sort of flat here. Uh, if you look at this period when the when this drop took place and then it came back, it was it was sort of flat. Now it's now it's rising again um, and actually could provide some support, say, twenty nine hundred, something like that on a, on a pullback. Um, but the big thing on the monthly that I wanted to point out, if you look at the size of these bars, especially these three, four in this zone here, how much bigger they are than all the other bars going back to uh, 2012. And when I see that kind of price action, I tend to not look for that, especially for that time frame. I tend to not put as much weight on the indicators like MACD and ADX. Uh, they're going to have a lag to them when there's a lot of volatility and you can you can kind of see the volatility based on the size of the bars. So I always like to take it in perspective and make sure I know when the size of these bars are big, you want to be, uh, you know, you definitely want to be focusing more on price action. You can look at the moving averages. You can look at price and uh, support and resistance. Uh, the indicators are just going to have some lag to them, especially in that time frame. Uh, if we go and look at the weekly chart, it has continued to grind higher and move higher, especially since uh, that period where it had gone sideways and it sort of channeled between the 50% retracement and the 62% retracement. And if we go to the daily, you can see that uh, once it worked through this specific line, that I had drawn and the last trade setup that we had was a buy signal and it ended up being, uh, uh, I think the target that I said was I used 2850 on the low end and 20, uh, I'm sorry, 2800 on the low end and 2950 on the upside, which is about 150 points. You add that to the breakout level and it gives you 3100. So we, we did basically hit the target off of that last uh, trade pattern. Uh, that that actually was off the hourly, uh, but the daily kind of shows where the key levels were. Um, so we've we've reached that level. Does that mean that I'm going to go short? Does it mean that I you know I'm going to automatically sell? I, I'm I just don't do it that way. I'm going to have some targets out there and make sure that I'm uh, taking some profits along the way. But it's it's really I'm waiting for signs uh, and signals that the market wants to turn down, especially before I start getting bearish. So if I go and look at the hourly chart, uh, you know, essentially what I've been talking about for a long time, really since the low, is, is where um, we're trying to identify when the ADX line, the, the red ADX or DI, I should say, which is the directional index for the sellers, so red is the strength of the sellers, green is the strength of the buyers, and the blue line is the diff is basically an average of the difference between the two. And so what we've been saying this whole move up is we're looking for a move where uh, red comes up and makes a move down just like it was doing here and then makes a bottom above 25 and holds, basically holds 25. And the reason why that's so important is it shows a real resilience to any kind of uh, market rally. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a confirming evidence that the trend has a pretty good chance of turning down. We just haven't seen it. We've seen several times, uh, if we go back here, you can see uh, right here, red poked up through and broke through 25. You can see right here where red busted up through 
and then this point here where I just highlighted. So that's three times now where red has made a move or the sellers have tried to make a move, but they haven't been able to get a strong hold of it because they haven't been able to make this higher bottom pattern. And so we're still waiting for that. And, and actually right now, green is above and and it's showing there's more strength in the buying than there is in the selling right now. Now, maybe we get some kind of a sell-off that causes this trend line to be broken and you know you get red to come up, but we're still looking for confirming evidence. And, and in my opinion, in this type of environment, based on what we're going through right now, I wouldn't be uh, so quick to jump the gun. It still seems like a lot of people are having a very hard time uh, turning bullish. And so I'm still waiting for the signs that people are getting, really getting more bullish. And, and once I see that, then I'm going to probably feel like we'll probably go through some type of a correction or a consolidation. But I'm not sure there's enough. I think as there's still, I'm seeing a lot of research out there and people still calling for, for drops in the market. Um, so uh, let's go back to the daily chart because I wanted to point out, this is a, a chart that I've used in the past. Uh, this uh Magenta line is just the simple 18 MA on the daily chart. Uh, the red line is the 18 month moving average, uh, which is overlaid onto this daily chart. And then the blue line is the uh, weekly uh, 18 MA, which is also overlaid on the daily chart. So we have two, three different time frames essentially in one chart. And what we've been looking for is a confluence or an alignment of the three trends because these are three trends and the blue line was declining while the uh, magenta line was rising. So the daily trend was up and the weekly trend was down and you never got it to the point where the magenta line or the daily trend turned down or the moving average turned down where we had all three moving averages basically declining below and, and price below. And that would be a real strong sign that sellers are coming in again. Now we've got a move where the, uh, daily chart has pushed its way through both the monthly and the weekly. And so now we're looking for this weekly line to start turning. I think if the weekly line can turn up and then price can pull back towards it, then we're going to have a situation where, again, all three trends are in alignment again. You've got a rising daily trend. You've got you'd have a, a weekly trend that's rising. And then you'd also have the support of the 18 month moving average, which, as I said at the beginning, is rising, even though it's slightly rising. Um, you'd have all three of those trends in alignment, and that would set up a good buying opportunity if it plays out that way. The, there's another way this could play out, and that's if the market comes down and just kind of breaks through the moving averages again. If we do it this way, if we don't hold the moving averages and make a higher low and turn up, then my thought is, is that we're going to get sloppy. Price action is going to get really sloppy in here and we're going to turn into a trading range and it's going to get probably pretty tough to make money, at least in, in the near term, if it plays out like that. I haven't seen enough strength in the sellers, as I've mentioned, on the hourly chart. We just haven't had it yet, but I think if we got enough sellers to show up to turn this uh, ADX negative on the hourly chart, then I'd start to think that you know the, the upside gains are going to get a little bit more difficult and uh, there's going to be a lot more choppy action and, and it's more of a stand aside type of environment until we get a little bit clearer uh, picture of what's taking place. So the thing I'm looking for is a more orderly pullback back towards these three moving averages, especially if the uh, if the uh, moving average on the weekly, the blue line here, the 18 week moving average can start to flatten out and cup around. Then we'll have support from all three trends and all three trends will be in alignment. And I think that sets up the next really good opportunity, which I think is the least expected, which is the market continuing to climb higher. So um, th this is something I'm on the lookout for. I think this is how we want to frame this out. We don't need to predict. We can sit here and watch and look for our indicators, especially on the hourly, to show us that something important is happening on a momentum basis. If we can't get red to take over here, you have to let the buyers continue to, the, you got to uh, play along with the buyers to the upside. 
And, um, you know, at some point the red is going to take over. Trust me, it's going to we're going to have sellers strong enough to cause this market to turn down. We just haven't had it yet. So I uh, uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, uh, please hit the like button and uh, we'll talk to you soon.